I'm used to walking into a room in New Zealand and knowing at least someone. It is one of the beautiful things about a small country like my own. And while this moment feels incredibly daunting to me right now, I do take comfort knowing there are around 30 New Zealanders studying here. <laughs> and statistically, at least one of them will be my cousin. Now, where I come from, we have a parliamentary representative democracy. Without giving you a litany of fun facts on New Zealand that you're unlikely need to need again, here is the very brief version. We have a mixed member proportional system, which essentially means every vote counts. And it's ensured that our parliament better reflects our communities. Almost 50% of our parliament are women. Almost 20% are Māori, the indigenous people of New Zealand. And our Deputy Prime Minister is a proud gay man and sits among several other rainbow parliamentarians. In the past 10 years, we have passed laws that include everything from the introduction of gay marriage and the banning of conversion therapy right through to embedding a 1.5 degree climate change target into law, banning military-style semi-automatics and assault rifles, <laughs> and the decriminalisation of abortion. On the 15th of March 2019, 51 people were killed in a terrorist attack on two mosques in Christchurch, New Zealand. The entire brutal act was live streamed on social media. The Royal Commission that followed found that the terrorist responsible was radicalised online. Now, in the aftermath of New Zealand's experience, we felt a sense of responsibility we knew that we needed significant gun reform, and so that is what we did. But we also knew that if we wanted genuine solutions to the issue of violent extremism online, it would take government, civil society, and the tech companies to come together and change the landscape. And the result was the Christchurch call to action. And while much has changed as a result, important things haven't. The time has come for social media companies and other online providers to recognise their power and to act on it. That means... That means upholding their own basic terms of service. That means recognising the role they play in constantly curating and shaping the online environments that we're in. That algorithmic processes make choices and decisions for us, what we see and where we are directed. And at best, that means that the user ex experience is personalised. But at worst, it means the user experience can be radicalised. It means that there is a pressing and urgent need for responsible algorithm development and deployment. Now, we have the forums for online providers and social media companies to work on these issues alongside civil society and governments, and we have every reason to do it. Let's start with transparency in how algorithmic processes work and the outcomes they deliver. But let's finish with a shared approach to responsible algorithms, because the time has come.